everyone, and welcome to the um, conversations. Uh, we have today with us Linda Baker, Reverend Linda, and myself, and I'm going to lead a topic of discussion that was pretty popular when we did it at the beginning of the year. So before I get into it, I would like to open us in prayer. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and get centered, and take a moment to be present in this moment in time to be open to hear the words and wisdom, the guidance that comes forth, and that we as a panel share with you these thoughts that may for you enlighten your day and share something that brings meaning to your life. We are so grateful that we have this ministry to serve our congregation and to those who watch it. We are here to be a purpose in God's wills and in divine wisdom. Thank you so much. Amen. So um, in the beginning of the year, I did a workshop. Uh, one of our tapings that we did was about decluttering, you know, getting rid of the clutter in your home. And it seems a, an appropriate thing for beginning of the year. And it was very popular. We got a lot of good feedback. And today I want to take it a little further um, about decluttering. It's uh, compassionate decluttering. And this is from an email that I received from Carrie Richardson, who does a, um, she has a subscription, a digital workshop that she does regularly, and she sends out these emails. And this one, I'm just going to read some excerpts from this email. It says, there is not a single person on this planet who doesn't have clutter. Well, that's the truth. No matter how tidy, organized, or mindful a person is, there will always be something for or someone that can be cl cleared. Clutter is anything or anyone that gets in the way of you living a spiritual life. Can we? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and because of because each of us will forever be a work in progress. I mean, how boring would it be to be perfect? We all carry some form of clutter. So compassion and clutter. Recognizing that you're not alone and that there's no overarching finish line in your decluttering journey may inspire some compassion. Clutter doesn't define your worth or your abilities. It's just a normal part of our lives. But that's not to say clutter is devoid of emotion. The process of clearing clutter often stirs a tornado of emotions. And the best thing you can do is honor that roller coaster. The emotional journey of decluttering. Feeling sentimental or guilty when letting go is natural. When these feelings arise, grab a journal and pour your heart out. Kindness and compassion mean accepting and embracing your emotions rather than pushing them away. Long-standing change never comes from a self-punitive plan or place. You'll have much more decluttering success when you give yourself grace with, you, with your pace and feel whatever comes up without judgment. Another powerful tool in the art of decluttering is curiosity. When you find yourself unable to get started, have that difficult conversation or make a healthier choice, instead of getting critical, get curious. How might you benefit from not clearing the clutter you say you want gone? Get compassionately curious and see what insights you can uncover. The hidden perks of inaction. During this investigation, leave your judgment at the door. You are not looking for reasons why you're not good enough. Instead, you're looking for those hidden perks or secondary gains you get from not taking action. For example, by avoiding the papers on your desk, you're also avoiding facing the unpaid bills and your potential fears around money or by allowing yourself to be mistreated by a friend, you're avoiding having to say what could be a difficult boundary. Declutter is more than just cleaning up. 
The cluttering isn't just about setting aside time and pushing yourself. It's about understanding your behavior and the emotions tied to your clutter. The stubborn jobs can teach you a lot about yourself, and it's a thorough, thorough, compassionate curiosity that happens. So remember, it is a way to create space for more balanced and harmonious life. So be gentle with yourself and be compassionate as you try to declutter. So I was moved by this because it's sort of often, I just did a major decluttering of stuff in my home. And um, and I still feel like I still have so much stuff left. Um, but what I learned about this was it's just a little bit at a time is getting rid of the things and what comes up. But the biggest part for me of compassionate decluttering were the thoughts that have been popping into my head from past experiences in situations that I was not the kindest or where somebody did me wrong. They were things that I stuffed in the back corner of my mind. And now as I'm decluttering and freeing up space in my home, my mind is still trying to free up space too, a decluttering. Those thoughts, those feelings, those inadequacies that I feel about things that happen in my life, actions that I took at that time that were maybe not the best choice, but they were what choice I could make, I had the ability to make at that time. So when I look at decluttering and thinking about how do we declutter our mind, and it's sort of thinking if you have thoughts like I have that are popping up where you get a flash of a moment where you interacted with somebody and that brings feelings of hurt or anger or just something that's been pushed down. Um, it can even be moments of joy, but it's something that's sitting there in your mind that's holding, that's just cluttering up you from being free, from being that spirit and soul that is ignited inside of you. So in process of decluttering, I like the part is that when things come up, when the emotions come up with when you're decluttering, whether it's stuff, it could be lifelong family things that you just don't want to get rid of, but then you're thinking, why am I hanging on to this? It could be a longtime friendship that you've outgrown. Um, it could be situations with your children that behaviors that have just are just taking up your time and place and you're sort of saying, wait a minute, I need to, I need to establish a boundary here. It's all kinds of things that are about decluttering but the biggest one is what are we carrying around in our in our minds and our hearts and our feelings and our emotions that are cluttering us from being all that we can be so I uh I learned a lot from this and it's helping me to keep my journaling going and having that book ready so that when I have a thought um of something that I do it's like I want I want to be free of this now I want to get rid of this cobweb that's in the corner of my mind that's no longer serving me. So um, I hope this inspires some of you. And um, either Linda, do you have some input that you want to share with us? Yeah, you bet I do. That, that cluttering is, is something I've been uh, working on for many years. And uh, with regards to the journaling, that was the first thing that came to mind for me. I have this habit of when I hear a quote or somebody say something, or maybe it even comes in my own mind, I take a piece of paper and I write it down and I've got a, uh, uh, a, uh, a ceramic uh, pot over here that I keep putting these things into and it's starting to look like a flower actually. So I take those eventually and I journal them all in a book and then I can throw away all those little pieces of paper. And that's just a, a simple example of how I started doing that. And then uh, we moved across the country just a couple of years ago. And when I got here, I had a lot more things that I owned that I, that I really didn't need anymore. I, it was a seasonal thing. I had snow tires and now I'm living in a, in, in a perfect environment and I don't need snow tires anymore. 
So the materialistic big things that, that came in my life, I realized it was an opportunity uh, to, to uh, awaken the Santa Claus within myself. I just simply wait for the right people to come along and I hear the right situation. And then I try to give these things, such as the snow tires, away to somebody that I think may be able to use them if I know that they're moving into an environment that's that has snow. And uh, I've been really successful, materialistic, playing Santa Claus and giving away the things that I don't need here. And uh, now the hard part, I can, I can do those simple steps, the journaling and the materialistic things, but then it's like you say, then I've got the mental things, the, the things that I hold on to that I need to declutter. And that's where you're a good teacher to me. You're telling me how to do this and through this book. And it's, it's, it's something that I'm working on. I'm going to continue to work on. I thank you for bringing it up to me. Well, I really love this, uh, this topic too. Um, it's a little different language than what I used. And Kathy, I'm so grateful when you bring this to me because it gives me a different perception, a different way of looking <clears throat> at it and hopefully eventually a different way of dealing with it. I, I know that I compartmentalize. I put things that don't belong in the here and now aside and and just keep them for, for when I can go through and take a look at it. And I've done it all my life. I learned it as a child as a coping strategy when um, something is happening and you just can't get hysterical because you're in charge of little kids or or whatever, you just put it aside and deal with what you need to do. And for me, I need to go through those compartments um, fairly regularly and figure out what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to save and what I'm going to incorporate into my being and what I'm just going to put here as an adventure that I had or a memory that that I'm keeping that nece doesn't necessarily affect me when I need to declutter is when I've got like a junk drawer grow going <clears throat> when somebody says something and wow that really hurt that really stood out to me I really felt that I can't look at it right now I'm going to put that right here in this drawer so I'll remember to look at it just like putting you know, paper clips and rubber bands in that junk drawer in the kitchen. And that's where my um, decluttering comes in. I need to go through and look, am I holding a resentment? Is there something I need to forgive? Is there a place where I need to make amends or um, own my behavior or change my patterns so that I'm not doing these same things again? And oftentimes, I find things in the junk drawer that actually go with something I have in a compartment. Yeah, that hurt me because I still haven't done the forgiveness work that I need to do from here. So <clears throat> often, decluttering causes a whole nother job. It's like when you decide, okay, I'm going to take all this stuff into the bathroom and then you try and put it in the cupboards in the bathroom and you realize you need to completely redo the bathroom. So that's kind of, and I hope that analogy made some kind of sense, but that's kind of what I end up with, with decluttering. I, I'm not a very good journaler, but I am very good at meditation. And when I can clearly see the situation, the problem or the clutter, I can usually take it into a time of meditation. And that brings me clarity and understanding 
and peace. And at that point, I know what to do with whatever it is I'm trying to declutter. <clears throat> In times of high stress, it's like when you put the potato masher in the in the junk drawer and you can't open the junk drawer because the masher is, is keeping everything blocked. Um, and that's not usually when I declutter, but it is when I know I need to do some decluttering. I need to take the potato masher out of the junk drawer so I can open and close it. So <clears throat> that's my metaphysical mental decluttering. Any other comments or thoughts? I want to thank both of you for your input on that. It's always an interesting topic. And uh, so it's uh, I'm glad we were able to share that. So um, hopefully other people will be able to share their thoughts on it. Thank you. Th thank you for the subject. And uh, if, if I can help out uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, just thank the audience for uh, attending today sharing our thoughts with us and i'd like to thank the panel uh, both of you for for uh, your input i hope mine was okay too and um let's see i'd like to invite the audience to leave us a comment online and uh, you can also join our conversations anytime you like all you have to do is call our church office I'd love to give you their phone number. It's 619-579-9586. And just ask to join the group or even uh, choose a topic. And we'll be glad to discuss it. And we, we thank you all for coming. And uh, if I might uh, end our session in a prayer. Thank you. Uh, uh, dear Father, <clears throat> our beloved Mother, Father God, once again you've blessed us with your wisdom today through the voices and the hearts of those here at your call. Thank you for doing so, Lord. And may, may our thoughts, our energy, our love extend out far beyond our abilities to even know the distance and touch hearts. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments, which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.